The duckling cannot know that it's quite different from the baby gull which is now hatched out alongside it. Nonetheless, something tells it that it must not stay with this other nestling. On its very first evening, it leaves. Unlike the cuckoo, it makes no further demands on the bird that incubated it. Even though it's only a few hours old, it's perfectly capable of fending for itself. obviously look different from the other reed warbler chicks, but they have this thing called, they have evolved calls that are called mouth gape, and it's when they mimic the sound of an entire brood of baby chicks, where it mimics like the sound of a bunch of babies, so the mom, the foster mom feels like it has to feed the baby often and often, even though it looks really different and is like twice its size. Um, and how the eggs work is called poly... Morphism. So the females actually mate randomly, and they have they have the two sex chromosomes that are Z and Y, uh, Z and W, and they pass on down their W gene, which which carries the pattern of their egg to their daughters, and they end up having the same eggs, and so on and so on. And uh, so the ones that look different than the the original reed warbler eggs tend to die out faster because. Um, the foster moms have evolved to notice the difference between their eggs and the cuckoo's eggs. And uh, the way that they know which nest to go back to when they hatch, when they need to lay their egg is uh, when they are born as chicks, they imprint on their foster mom. And when it's time for them to have an egg, to lay an egg, they, they find someone that, a bird that looks like their foster mom and lays their egg in that nest. And so on and so on. Okay, so there's the snakes. Uh, it's common that the scarlet king snakes mimic the coral snakes with its pattern of stripes of red, yellow, and black. Even though the scar scarlet king snake is um, harmless and the coral snake is uh, poisonous, which is petition mimicry. And this scientist has found that this only works when they live in the same habitat because birds wouldn't know that the coral snake or owls or their predator won't know that the coral snakes are poisonous unless they have they live in that area and the garlic king snake will only be protected where uh, the predators are aware that the coral snakes are poisonous. The hognose snake also it spreads its neck almost like a cobra but it's not mimicking a cobra because it can't learn from a cobra where they don't live in the same environment. It spreads its neck to look like it's bigger and stronger, so it's it's warning other predators and other animals from itself. And they also play dead like possums do. They just like roll on their black and on their back and have their belly up because predators tend to kill and then eat their prey. So if they think that their prey is something's wrong with them or if they're already dead or if they're hurt or sick, then they won't want to kill it and eat it. So it's protecting himself like that. And it also looks kind of similar to the copperhead or cotton mouth. Yeah, cotton mouth, which is Batesian mimicry. Okay, so this is the, we talked about how octopus or octopi are really good at camouflaging. They're also good at mimicking. mimicking. Uh, it's the first known species to take on characteristics of multiple species, which is uh, 15 total that are known. So it does the poisonous soulfish, lionfish with poisonous fins, poisonous snakefish, uh, sea fish, sand anemones, stingrays, mantis shrimp, and jellyfish. It is so smart that it will figure out which species is the most uh, scary to other animals. So it will take on that. Like if it's attacked by a territorial damselfish, it will mimic a sea snake, which is known to be the damselfish's 
uh, top predator. And we will show you a video to explain. Unknown until it was spotted, first by fishermen off the coast of Indonesia in the 1990s. It looked like an octopus, but it could morph its shape in an instant to appear as seemingly any animal around it. At first, no one had any idea what it was. The first time I saw it, I just was blown away. You couldn't get a more spectacular animal. It really is the pinnacle of wizardry. Biologist Mark Norman was the first scientist to study this seemingly shapeless creature. He named it the Mimic Octopus. The Mimic Octopus makes itself look like a living, moving animal. So it pulls all its arms around behind its body and swims along like a poisonous flatfish called a banded sole. In other cases, if it's getting attacked, it puts six arms down a hole and raises the other two arms to look like a poisonous sea snake that has bands along its body. If that's not enough, it'll swim along looking like a poisonous lionfish with these banded arms looking like the banded spines that come off these very deadly fish. So far, 15 separate species are known to be in the Mimic Octopus Act, and Norman is not always sure exactly what the Mimic is doing. He observed this Mimic scuttling along the sea bottom, looking something like a furry turkey with human legs. Sometimes it's hard when you watch a mimic octopus doing what it does to interpret what's going on. It's a bit like looking at ink spots in a psychiatrist's office going, uh, I don't know what that is, it could be a piano, it could be a fridge. So you get three or four divers together and you'll argue all night trying to work out what we think it was mimicking. Where did nature's greatest actor come from? shape, color, behavior, size to mimic other uh, sea creatures in order to protect itself or to look for it to look scary. And how mimicry and evolution are linked is that um, with Milurian mimicry, uh, the, it's called like the ever evolutionary cooperation where common looking uh, species of butterflies work together to protect themselves. So they have learned to work together. And, uh, and the uh, main idea of mimicry is that the predator drives, uh, drives natural selection by learning to avoid an unpalatable, unpalatable species and things that look like unpalatable species. So they eventually learn to avoid things that are bad for them, and which is evolving. And the cuckoo evolves to have more similar eggs and calls, while the host gets better at detecting the imposters. And to like expand on that, so many insects have evolved defense mechanisms against predators, which make them dangerous or toxic to eat. And then there are also species that have learned to mimic these dangerous animals by pretending to look like them or have some sort of um, similarity. So natural selection has therefore favored the evolution of species with toxic makeup and bright coloration. So many distasteful species which have the same habitats have evolved similar color patterns. And the predators having encountered many distasteful prey in one area that only has to learn one color pattern to avoid. And in this way, mimicry leads to evolution. And mimicry is only possible when the two species, the model and the mimic, both live in the same like area or environment or habitat so that other animals learn to defend, uh, to protect themselves from those animals. And uh, yeah, so in, even though there are similar looking species around the world, uh, it's not mimicry because, say like with butterflies, there are butterflies in North America and other continents that look similar and have similar wing patterns but they're, and aren't the same family. But that is because biological mechanisms and processes that create wing patterns are funda fundamentally the same. So uh, as long as you grow up or live in the same habitat with the same environment, similar environment and similar uh, climate, you can... Uh, end up with lots of butterflies with similar looking patterns around the world. And so this is basically an example. So these are the models and these butterflies are Batesian mimics of these ones. So these ones are harmful and these ones are not but look similar to the ones that are. 
and Mularian mimicry, the last column, those two butterflies look similar to the models as well, but both these ones and the far ones are harmful, and in this way they both protect each other.